Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure. First, I want to welcome you if it's your first time joining us. I, I hope uh, whether you stumble across this video or maybe you were sent here by a friend, uh, I just hope it, it, tonight is a blessing for you. And maybe you'll want to join us every Wednesday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And and I also invite everybody to join us each Sunday at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Time for our Sunday church program. Um, and we've got, of course, people in the chat room. Uh, I'll call you the, 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 the regular participants in the congregation. And uh, thank you for being with us again, particularly the people with the wrenches. Uh, we really need your help because uh, if a troll comes by, we need you to not allow them to disrupt the program. And if uh, if someone comes in and it's their first time with us, uh, if you're a moderator, uh, I, I'd like you to take on the responsibility of being a greeter, like a greeter in the church. You see someone new, greet them, uh, befriend them, and make sure they, they, they know that they are welcome. I will say though that um, moderators, if you can steer people to the subject that's being discussed, I would greatly appreciate that also. Uh, sometimes uh, a subject comes up in the chat room that's off topic, but maybe it is important to be, address some of these things. But for the most part, um, uh, let's see if we can't get everybody on the same page as the discussion. All right. So before we get into the study, uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 1, let me have uh, Renee and uh, Brother Jason Cripps uh, introduce themselves. Ladies first, Renee. Go ahead, Jason. <laughs> I'm picking on him. Ouch. Oh, me, I'll be Ouch. back. Me, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Renee Roland, channel of the same name. And like all my fabulous brothers on the panel, I contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. That uh, salvation, eternal life is a free gift based on the work of Jesus, his redemptive work on the cross, uh, and do my best to uh, clarify scripture in context, rightly divided, and untwist uh, scriptures that people often twist up uh, to give fear and shed doubt uh, on our blessed assurance in Christ. So that's what I do. Renee Roland, R-O-L-A-N-D. Good to Renee be here. Roland, uh, some of us know her as the untwisted sister. That's right. The untwisted sister. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, Renee, um, Brother Cripps um, made it a, a point earlier before we went live. Uh, I think it's a good point. So um, let's try it tonight. Uh, and that is um, because there's only three of us, um, uh, I don't think we're going to have any issues with audio if we leave our microphones on at all times instead of muting. And Brother Cripp says that that will uh, uh, and probably cause us to have a little bit more, uh, let's say, uh, interaction and okay. more, make it more lively. So let's try that. And some okay. of you might be, go ahead. Awesome. Oh, sure. um, some of you may be wondering, well, what do you mean there's only three of you? What about uh, Brother Michael, Ultimate Mordecai? I did send him the link, but I'm not expecting to be here because uh, he, I, from what I understand, he has a uh, required meeting to attend at his workplace. Uh, otherwise, he would be with us tonight. Uh, but maybe he'll surprise us and join us for part of it, if possible. Uh, but, yeah, with three of us, I don't think we're going to have an audio feedback issue. So let's try it like that. And uh, unless it becomes too unruly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be Jason's fault. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. I'm all the time okay. talking over people and interrupting and whatnot, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right, then. Let's get started with the uh, – oh, but, uh, I had Renee introduce herself, but I didn't have Brother – Brother Chris, introduce yourself. Someone may not know about your channel. Go ahead, please. Thank you so much. My name is Jason Cripps. I'm part of a channel called True Story Live. We come on Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, what we like to do is bring people into a discussion, an open discussion with, without uh, 
um, any anger or frustration and, um, you know, maybe different beliefs. Uh, we're all inclusive as far as that goes, but underneath everything, of course, we're maintaining for the faith and, um, uh, tackling, um, a lot of times, uh, psychological issues, sociological issues, things like that. Um, just things uh, people deal with every day and throwing it out there. Um, so uh, we would definitely uh, uh, invite anyone that hasn't heard that to come over and give a listen. Um, also, I'm on this show on Wednesdays and I'm also on uh, Talk and Doctrine Matthias' show on Monday nights for Monday's Milk. But um, this is my favorite, though. <laughs> right. I, I love the Wednesday uh, uh, broadcast. We'll, we'll just keep that between the three of us. That's right. Yep, that's private. Don't anybody say anything. <laughs> okay. Um, um, the I guess I'll take a minute and tell you about my channel in case there happens to be somebody here who doesn't know me. Uh, I am Brother Luke, but my YouTube channel is called Sin City Preacher. And I chose that name because uh, I, when I started the channel, I was a street preacher, and I live in Sin City. That's Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, but my channel, even though I began um, uh, as in exclusively, entirely an evangelism channel to tell people the good news about the free gift of salvation and the guarantee of eternal life, um, that's still my primary uh, mission. But my channel has kind of expanded and to be more comprehensive. I have over 60 playlists on a great range of theological subject matter. So I, I hope you will just peruse the playlists and find a playlist of interest. And uh, I hope that those studies will be helpful to you. Um, this video tonight will go on our playlist uh, uh, for uh, uh, the, the Book of Romans. Now... Uh, and also for the playlist um, Wednesday night Bible studies. Now, before we started studying the book of Romans, uh, we did several studies uh, talking about some of the famous sermons throughout history. So I hope you go back and watch those. Uh, and uh, I, especially regarding the book of Romans, I hope you go watch this study from the beginning, particularly the introduction, the first couple of chapters are very, very important, presenting an idea called prosopopoeia. And then Romans chapter 9 uh, is very important for me because uh, I want people to understand that Calvinists are wrong about Romans chapter 9. Yeah. Uh, and, and now we've moved on and uh, we're up to ch chapter 14. So let's begin. Um, I'm a KJV firstist. I'll read it in the KJV first. And then uh, we may also look at it in Amplified or some other translations. Uh, Paul writes, him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Wow. Okay, uh, Rene, uh, I, please go first, but this term doubtful disputations, that kind of just like shocked me or something because that, right. that, term, there, that term has always stood out to me for well, 30 it, years it, it, it's kind of difficult to address without really giving the context away and moving forward in the scriptures. So the best thing I could say here is when it talks about those that are weak in the faith, it means they haven't fully understand. They don't fully understand the liberty that we have in Christ and how the flesh doesn't justify us of anything. As Paul says in another place, taste not, touch not, handle not none of that justifies us. Mm -hmm. So weak in the faith means they don't understand. They don't have the strength uh, within their faith to understand that they are uh, perfected forever and that they have liberty uh, and their own conscience uh, convicts them for things that are not necessary to be convicted about. But receive him anyway. If he has an issue with taste not, touch not, handle not, and feels for himself that it's wrong, there's no need to get into arguments over it. Uh, it that's what it means by doubtful disputations. That's what I believe. All right, then. Uh, I'm going to, before I ask Brother Cripps to comment on it, I'm going to give him the benefit of, uh, let me read it in the Amplified. 
Uh, let me read in, in the KJV first right now, and then the Amplified, so you get the contrast here. It says in the KJV, him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Now, Renee, uh, I'm very, always impressed with, with your uh, interpretation of the KJV. Um, I, I'm, I'm a pretty educated person, you know. I went to school. I'm a college graduate. I, I think I'm pretty uh, uh, articulate, but even though it doesn't sound like it right. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, uh, the KJV, that language, um, quite often I, when I read it, I, I'm really not so sure, and I have to try to figure it out. Right. And I don't ever see you stumble. Uh, every time I ask you to t explain this in the KJV, you just seem to, it seems to come very naturally to you. Every summer I go to the Shakespeare Festival uh, in uh, Cedar City, Utah. Nice. And we watch and see a couple of, two or three plays that are Shakespeare. And I noticed that in the beginning, it takes me about an hour of listening to it before I can even understand what they're saying. Right. And, and it's the same thing with this KJV Old English uh, that I have that problem. Um, but most of the time, KJV, I don't have an issue. Uh, but when we read that in the Amplified, uh, look, it, it says basically what Renee said. As, as for the alone whose faith is weak, accept him into your fellowship, but not for the purpose of quarreling over his opinions. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Brother Cripps? Yeah. Uh, and I wish uh, that people would read this verse more and understand what it means. Um, hey, I think you, Jason. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of people young in the faith that get bombarded by older people in the faith that want them to believe exactly like they believe. And they won't accept anything less than that. Right. And the verses that are coming are really going to get fired up about this because this, this particular uh -huh. Uh, chapter Paul addresses so many things that if people really tried to pay attention to what's being said here, it would avoid a lot of um, fighting, infighting, and and uh, backbiting, and finger pointing, and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, ultimately, division and people could be stronger. They could be one in the body, like it's like is is uh, suggested that we be one in the spirit. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of us do that and uh, what a joy there is when we're not fighting against each other, um, especially someone weaker than us. That's maybe not in the same place. They don't have to believe everything. Let the Holy spirit do his work mm -hmm. in, in someone's life. Let, let them get to the point of maturity through what the Holy spirit does. You, you're not solely responsible to make sure a young Christian does things exactly the way you do them. Um, and that's all he's saying here. He's saying if they're, they're weak in the faith, accept them, invite them in, and don't get them into in, into quarrels or fighting or, or arguing over their beliefs. You know, I, I also want to say I think it's it's so important to know weak in the faith is not insulting them. It's just saying they don't understand the liberty they have. They're not quite strong. Like they're they're not. Uh, standing strong in the liberty they have. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. The uh, uh, in the I'm going to read it again. The KJV: Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye. Now you you both are saying weak in the faith. You know, some people might say if you we apply this and say you're it's talking about you you're someone who's weak in the faith they could take offense and feel it's or insulting them but it's just like when someone didn't like how i was quoting jesus when he said don't cast your pearls to the swine well i'm i'm sorry it's, i'm not expressing my opinion about this i'm quoting the words of jesus jesus referred to them as swine Paul's referring to someone as someone who's weak in the faith. It's not intended to, to try. It's not the point is to insult someone, but to describe the, the, this, the, the problem. They're weak in the faith. That means that they have not re, under, grown in understanding very deeply. There are things that a lot of things they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we need to be patient with them. We need to receive them. But here's uh, 
It says, but not to doubtful disputations. You know, doubtful disputation. Well, I think disputation comes from the root word dispute. Mm -hmm. To just is to argue. Uh, two people disputing something is to arguing their different opinions or different points of view. Yeah. So um, he said, we're not supposed to have these uh, uh, doubtful disputation, disputations. Uh, now, I, I really think that, uh, and let me look at the Amplified again. It says, uh, as for the alone whose faith is weak, accept him into your fellowship. Okay, yeah, you're welcome to come to the fellowship. You don't have to have deep understanding of the Bible. You could be either weak in the faith. That doesn't necessarily mean that that that, that, that same person is also a babe in Christ. They may they may have matured spiritually and Amen. they're Amen. Well, great and and uh, and actually they have a let's say they have a lot of years behind them uh, under their belt as a Christian, but but they don't have very deep understanding about some things. And so uh, we accept you, mm -hmm. but we don't want you to come in and into the congregation, into the fellowship, and just stir up arguments all the time about things. Now, if you've noticed on our Sunday program, uh, the whole format of the uh, program is to uh, do these disputations, <laughs> you know? That's what we... We do on Sundays. For, uh, there's usually four of us or five of us on the and then from the congregation we get questions sent to us each week. And when we when we get a question, unless it's about one of the core doctrines, uh, which on which we all agree on the core doctrines that we unify around the core doctrines, mm -hmm. but apart from the core doctrines, uh, we have liberty, freedom to have different opinions. And you see this demonstrated every Sunday. We've done it now for more than a year, every Sunday, having these disputations. But they're not, they don't turn into arguments where we're trying to prove each other wrong. What we're doing is, is each taking a turn, answering a question. So, so a, a person who's listening can have a, a uh, let's say, a buffet of answers to, to listen to and consider. But neither of none of us are saying, "Well, wait a second, I, uh, uh, you're wrong because of this and that," and, and try to win an argument. Right. We so that that is, I think, an important element. When you, when you have these non-essential subjects, we should have our freedom to express any opinion, and, as long as it's done with respect. And when and we should also, I think, we all have an obligation to each other is to to hear each other out and listen. I want to consider what someone else has to say. Because, hey, I've been wrong, wrong in some of the past. Maybe I'm still wrong. <laughs> and I don't, if I'm wrong, I don't want to remain wrong. So, uh, yeah, tell me how I'm wrong. But let's do it with respect and courtesy. And, and But let's not go back and forth arguing, you know, particularly pub publicly. And, and then sometimes we get in the flesh because our pride enters in and we want to win that argument. So I think that's really uh, what I would say about these doubtful disputations that we're not supposed to engage in. Love it. Any more, uh, Renee? Or, no, uh, Jim, Jim just wanted to say hi to everybody. Oh. Hey, Jim. Hey. Hello, James. And James and Kitty. Can. James and Kitty. Such a, good dog. Such a good dog. I was doing some math. <laughs> math. Yeah, he's, he's studying Googleology, the study ever, of large numbers. Ever heard of a Google? Yeah, okay. you talked about it last week. Yeah, one of the hundred zeros. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Now, what are the odds of me ever being wrong? One out of a Google. Oh, there you go. One out of Google. That's yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, there you That's go. That's right. Okay. Uh, now we'll go to verse two in the KJV. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Brother Cripps? Yeah, so this verse is is, is speaking against, um, uh, <laughs> I'm making a joke here before I say anything. I'm, I was just going to say it, but that's that's what I'm used to doing. Say but it. I don't want to upset anyone. It's against vegans. <laughs> it's totally against vegans. Paul is saying, don't be vegan because it, it's weak. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. No, well, um, I mean it's true. Uh, people that think that it's more pleasing to God or it's sinful to eat uh, an animal, uh, it, it's not biblical at all. 
No, no, it's not biblical. And that was the point I was going to make. I am just joking about vegans. If you if you decide for whatever reason not to eat meat, please, please do that. And the, and the verses that are coming up will give you every liberty to do so. It's coming up. But for this verse, one believeth that you may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. So this is for the people, too, that, that want us to, to go back under the old law and not eat things that before were forbidden, and now we have the freedom and liberty to eat them. Um, so he's he's already ramping up to the point that, that's going to be made even, even more clear coming up that different believers have different choices, and it's okay, guys. It's okay. Yep. yep. You you don't ha you don't have to divide and and draw lines between each other and stand on either side and point your finger at the other person and say you eat meat so I'm not going to fellowship with you. Well, you eat pork so I'm not going to fellowship with you. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I see that a lot yeah. with the Hebrew rooters. Yeah. yeah. Peter, Peter claimed that Jesus was a vegan, and that's just wrong. I mean, I don't know the exact verse, but I can imagine Jesus as being a pretty chill guy. Well, he ate fish on that. Yeah, he ate fish. He yeah, ate he fish. Ate fish. What, uh, what what verse are you referring to where Peter claimed Jesus was a vegan that you're you're No, saying? no, Pita. Pita, the the Pita. Oh, Pita. Pita the organization, yeah. Pita. Okay. Yeah, it's people uh, eating tasty animals, I think. All right, I, 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 thought you, I thought you had a back east accent and called him Pita. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Well, a good answer, Brother Cripps. But Renee, I want to ask you: Can you elaborate more? Why does this verse not say, "For one believeth that he may eat all things; another eateth herbs"? Why does it have to say, "Another who is weak eateth herbs"? Well, because they still feel that it's pleasing to God based on their diet. That they're pleasing God uh, by how they eat. And wow. that's why they're weak. Because they do not realize that God has given us liberty. And actually, the more faith you have in the finished work of Christ, the less of these legalistic uh, controls you put upon yourself. Amen. You're aware that you're free uh, to eat all things. It, 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 we give thanks to God for all Things. You know, I always say if somebody's like starving, their little um, their rules are going to get lax really quick. Like, you know, once they're if there's a famine or something, people are going to be, you know, uh, realizing that they're going to have to take whatever is given and be grateful for that. You know, I, I often think of those people in the Bible when they had famines and so forth. Uh, but there are, there, that's why he's weak. Uh, one believeth. See, if you're strong in the faith, you believe you can eat all things. You are not under the Mosaic law. You are not under. See, these things were shadows and were for a purpose. Yeah. The, uh, the 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 uh, uh, shrimp, their scavengers. They weren't. They were just supposed to uh, be different than the pagans. And the pagans sacrificed pigs. They weren't supposed yep. to eat them. So uh, this was uh, never as part of what uh, saves you. These were uh, dietary restric restrictions on the nation of Israel because they were supposed to be separate and different than everyone. But now we have been justified freely by his grace. Those dietary restrictions no longer apply. And if you're strong in the faith, you know that you may eat whatever you want. Amen. And you're not pleasing God by being a vegetarian. Yep. Amen. Yeah, let me let me play off on when you say strong. If you're strong in the faith, of course, um, that's a, that's a natural um, way of explaining it because we're contrasting what the scripture says, referring to someone as weak in the faith. And but no, we're this the Bible says telling us don't be weak in the faith, be strong in the faith. So what is strong in the faith means? You have your faith is only on Jesus. Your faith is not in your diet. Or your ability to, to follow any kind of religious things. Yeah, you know, you're you're weak in the faith if you think those things matter. Yeah. Um, uh, also, I will say that because we got our mics off, uh, I, I am seeing a little we're more engaging. But I think it might be rubbing off in the chat room. Uh, we got uh, a, a couple of things. Uh, Hendricks wrote. Uh, uh, 
that uh, a good point. Weak but saved. So yeah, yeah, yeah. this is something. Oh, we we should not neglect it to always say weak does not mean they're not saved. If we're weak. That means maybe they don't have great depth of understanding. Right. But yet they're saved. And then uh, we got uh, Nyanda Bundu says, we keep on saying, oh, you can eat anything you want, but Nyanda says, just not tasty humans, y'all, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I will try to avoid that. Can we agree, that, that, can we agree really? that we're, we're not giving people freedom to be cannibals? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, being a cannibal is a judgment in the Old Testament. Yeah. When you're forced to eat your family as you're going to have to be forced to eat others as a judgment upon a wicked nation. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah that's right. That's right. And uh, also um, uh, eating dung. Uh, uh -huh. we, talked, we talked about that uh, in a private fellowship one, one day. Uh, uh, I said that there's a place in the Bible where people have to eat dung. Elijah. Yeah. Elijah yeah. was told to mix it with the bread. Yeah. Uh, well, there's basically they're they're being warned. They said if you don't give up and uh, if you if you insist in fighting against this, we're going to like have this thing against the city and starve you out and you'll be forced to eat your own dung. Oh, yeah. But um, okay, let let me read this in the Amplified and then we'll go on here. But it says one man's faith permits him to eat everything. Yeah. Well, the weak believer eats only vegetables. To avoid eating ritually unclean meat or something previously considered unclean. Right. Previously. Yes. So I, I think the the, uh, the Amplified, I think probably 95 to 99% of the time, the Amplified is helpful. Yeah. Well, every, they also, every, yeah. They, the, meaning they're weak in the faith in the sense that they don't realize that God has purified and cleansed all things through thanksgiving yes through, word, through the blessing of his word over it through thanksgiving it's purified it's no longer unclean yeah okay my question then is when was that principle established uh, uh, uh let's say um uh explicitly well it says in hebrews that god took away the first so he may establish the second Plus, Gentiles were never under any dietary restrictions. Yeah. Right. But establishing that the, the the Jews are not under any kind of dietary law any longer, no. that was established when God gave the vision to Peter and then right. explained to him the meaning that nothing is unclean. Right. And that nothing, that nothing, by the way, should not be understood as uh, there's no food that's unclean. You can eat uh, non-kosher uh, food now, uh, Peter. Right. He was also wanting to say nothing's unclean, including associating and having fellowship with a Gentile. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's go to the next verse in the KJV. Here we go. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth judge not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Mm. Okay, Renee. Yeah, uh, it's clear here that it says the one let not him that eat. So the one that's free to eat whatever he wants, he should not be hating on the guy that decides not to. Yep. And let not him with eateth not. So the guy that will not eat all things, but has put these restrictions on himself yep. through his own conscience. They call that an evil conscience in Hebrews. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, let him not judge the guy that does freely eat anything. So Boom. we should be hating on the guy that decides for himself that he won't eat. And the guy that won't eat should not be judging the guy. Like Jason was saying, should not be judging the guy that does eat something that guy may think is unclean yeah. because God has received him. So yeah. if God's received the one that does eat anything and the one that doesn't, because of, because of his own conscience, God has received them both. You shouldn't be hating, despising, or judging mm. what another person does. I see a lot of this with the Hebrew roots people, yeah. judging people that eat pork and and uh, and shrimp and so forth. Yep. Uh, they judge us as if they are superior. 
Yeah. They have some revelation we don't have. Yeah. Their revelation is to go back under the old law. Right. That's part of and the Hebrew roots movement. Them. They condemn us. Yep. And judge us. Yeah. I can spot one a mile away without them saying they're Hebrew rooters. When, like on Facebook, for instance, someone will make a post. Hey, guys, you know, I just got saved. Is it okay to eat pork? And then you can start to see the, the comments being made. You know, you can see the people that are free uh, point out that, yes, you can eat pork. It's no problem. It, it was an old dietary. And then they explain it. And then you can always spot the Hebrew rooter that starts mm -hmm. coming in. Before they say they're a Hebrew rooter, mm -hmm. they start using the scriptures that from the Old Testament. that. Yep. And they were never Jews, which is what's funny to me. Right. They were never, they were Jews. never Jews. But now all of a sudden they're Jewish or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But you're right. So, Brother Cripps, and they do hate. Brother Cripps uh, in verse 3, are you, are you finished or you, do you want to speak more about that before I talk about it? Uh, no, go ahead. You know what? Um, I, uh, Renee did a good job, and I don't think I need to add anything to what she said. It's perfect. Oh, 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 maybe I better say the same thing then. <laughs> no, I'm going to add to it. Um, good. I'm going to let the Amplified here in verse 3. Uh, the, the one who eats uh, everything is not to look down on the one who does not eat. And the one who does not eat must not criticize or pass judgment on the one who eats everything. For God has accepted him. Um, yeah, a couple of points that, that this idea in the KJV, God has received him. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue that that's a bad word or anything, but uh, accepted, I think I, I prefer accepted him. God has accepted him. In mm -hmm. other words, he's acceptable to God. Mm -hmm. Why is he acceptable to God? Because of his faith. It's, yeah. uh, his faith is strong. And so uh, he, that's what made him acceptable to God, accepted. He's in good standing with God, good standing, righteous. It means you have good standing. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, the um, I would like to extrapolate this idea, uh, this concept of how many not, syllables was that, Luke? That was amazing. Extrapolate. Okay, four syllables. That was pretty good. Extrapolate. <laughs> extrapolate. I could use a four, even a five-syllable word. That was good. Everyone, if we had Brother Jack Smack here, he'd really. Oh, he's just thing. hooked on phonics. <laughs> <laughs> But I, let's let's take the same concept concept about not judging a person on their dis decision they made about this dietary laws, uh, and and, uh, and now apply that to Bible translations. Uh, I see the same kind of issue with that. Uh, we are talking about um, how, um, for twenty five years. Uh, I pretty much was what some people would call a Ruckmanite. Dr. Peter Ruckman is, uh, Ruckman. he's recently left to be with the Lord. He's probably about 90 years old uh, and, uh, when he left us. Uh, he's written probably 300 or more books. And I've read many of his books. And But he was the number one champion for the whole country. He was the main leader for the KJV only position. And uh, I, I, I followed him, stepped right in line, marched lockstep with Ruckman and everything on that issue. Uh, but then maybe about six, seven years ago, I changed my position to say, okay, I, I prefer the KJV. I'm going to rely on it as my first reading, but I do not want to be limited sure. to it. In case, in case I come across a verse and I say, well, maybe the Amplified has, has a way of expressing it'll be helpful to me. Or maybe we can go to the Greek or maybe I can go to Brother Cripps or Sister Renee and maybe they can expound upon it and help me. I, I mm -hmm. know I'm not going to be a KJV only. I, I, the point I'm making is I should have the freedom to, yep. to, to have this position. Yeah. Uh, you know. If, if someone listening now is is in the KJV only camp, I, I would say, don't judge me for not being KJV only. I won't judge you for being KJV only. Right. Let's give liberty back and forth, reciprocal. Uh, hey, there's another word for you. Reciprocal. Uh, a tolerance on this subject. Uh, and uh, But 
the KJV only person, if they want to say, for me, I'm only going to read the that's KJV. Me. I say, amen, good for you. That's fine. Yep. No, no harm done. But yep. if you take the KJV only position and insist and insist on imposing it on the rest of the congregation, mm -hmm. that's where you're taking this too far and you're I violating the principle. <laughs> it's the same principle we're finding in these verses is that these are doubtful disputations. Yeah. You might say, no, the Bible translation is not a doubtful disputation. I said, no, it is a matter of opinion. Uh, and trying to impose uh, a particular Bible translation on the whole congregation is going too far. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a great point. Okay. Uh, all right, let's go to verse 4 in the KJV. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. Whew. Brother Cripps, I need your help with that one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if for, going from the end of verse 3, where he says, For God hath received him or accepted him, he's doubling down on that point. So who's judging another man's servant? He's talking about God's servants, other servants of God. To his own master, he either standeth or falleth. In other words, he either stands or or, or he falls. Um, won't the master hold him up? Won't God hold him up? If he decides to eat meat and that's fine with him, he's been accepted. Won't God? Uh, won't God stand with him in that decision? And on the other hand, if a man decides to eat herbs and that's you know vegetables or whatever, and that's what he wants to go with, won't God help him and approve of that? In his relationship with him, so who are we to judge somebody else when they're when they're they have their own relationship with God and God's given them liberty? So Very why true. are we trying to put a yoke of bondage on them? That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Renee. Yeah, I love uh, what you said, Jason. About you know, it, it's God makes him able to stand. You know, and it's the same thing with our salvation. It's amen. God who keeps us. It's God who justifies. Amen, amen. Nobody can can charge God's servant. It's yeah. God himself who cleanses us. It's God himself who says we're righteous. We don't stand before each other, Renee. That's we right. don't stand before each other on Judgment Day. That's right. We That's stand right. before God and God alone. I love, I love it. Who art thou that judge another man's servant? Like you said, you... It's God's servant mm -hmm. to his own master. He stands or falls. Yeah, yeah he should be holding up for God is able to make him stand. So regardless of what he chooses, like you said, God himself will make him stand. And if God wants to change his mind about these things, then God will. God will. But I don't think... Uh, it is anybody's place to tell another person how to fellowship with God or how to walk their faith out. We can share the liberty. We can tell people that God says, hey, it's all okay. Yep. You know, none of this uh, makes you stand or fall before God. Amen. But it's, it's not our place to tell someone they must do as we do. That's not right. That's right. It's not right. Yeah, I, I, I like how it, it it really boldly says, it's like getting right in front of someone's face and saying, who do you think you are? Yeah. Do you think that you have the right to, to judge me and take away my freedom on these things? Who do you think you are? It says, who art thou that judges? You know, so uh, it's pretty uh, um, strongly written. Uh, and I'm going to read it in the Amplified, though, and see what we come up with it. Uh, who are you to judge the servant of another before his own master he stands approved or falls out of favor and he who serves the master that is the Lord will stand for the Lord is able to make him stand yeah I mean if the, if the Lord is not judging us on these things and then what, who do you think you are to, to make these judgments against uh, uh, the brethren or the the cistern. Yeah. That's another word that uh, that I I think I invented it. Cistern. The way they talk, they think they're they think they're God. 
They think they're speaking for God. Yeah. Yeah. And they try to use uh, scripture to do it. So uh, let me let me respond to the chat room here. Uh, we do want the chat room involved, and this is not really pertinent to the subject, but I'm going to I'm going to veer off for a moment anyway. Burke Nibiru. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Burke Burku Nibiru. Why does sin have such stronghold on believers? Um, Brother um, Michael, uh, Ultimate Mordecai, made a video today uh, that was a beautiful answer to that question. So go to Ultimate Mordecai and watch the video that he made today. But I'll sum it up. The simplest answer also was, was given here in the chat room by... Um, to say got an evil conscience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the undo answer. He says, we have a fallen flesh. See, the reason that we have this stronghold, the sin has stronghold on believers is because we are living in this body of flesh, this sinful flesh. Yeah. Was he talking about you know, that or why people are so obsessed with it? You know, how, how so many Christians or people that claim to be Christians are so obsessed with sin. Yeah. You know, it's because they still got sin consciousness. They still think something's left to be done. Yeah, and not just their sin, but everyone else's sin. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it, it, it could be it could be either way. Uh, with this sin having con control, in yeah. other words, they they succumb to the sinful desires, or they're obsessed with thinking right. about sin. All right. the time. Either either way, there's a problem there. Yep. But the problem uh, is simply that until you get that glorified body, and uh, Michael did a wonderful job. I was telling you, Renee. Uh, your videos today were really outstanding. Um, they're all outstanding every day, but today even more so. And I felt the same way about Michael's uh, video I just watched. I think it was, he made it yesterday, actually. Yeah. Um, but so. uh, it was um, really, he went into great detail talking about this, how we, we should really be really looking forward, really excited about this promise of this body. Right. Not only never going to get old or sick, mm -hmm die but we'll be basically almost like a, a super person superman we're we'll going to be super the body of death. but we will not have any desire or sinful thoughts that's and right those, those things are be now imagine that not even the thought of sin not even have any come to your mind because it's just not appealing your body is such uh, this new body this glorified body doesn't have the sin nature so yep. the thought of sin doesn't even enter into our thoughts. Right. Amen. Amen. If that happens, uh, then we're going to have this struggle that you you ask about. Okatirion, Okatirion, yeah. putting on the new body, the eternal body that he gives yeah. us. Putting on. Is that, that what he called it? Is that what the? Yeah, Okatirion is Greek for for that. The the new body, are, the concept. Of are that. you going to be using the Greek now too, brother? Is that what I already doing? started. Yeah, I'm 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 studying both, but I'm not where where I would uh, you know quote it e each time we do a broadcast or anything. Yeah. No, that's good. I'm happy to hear it. I was just uh, joking. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, uh, all right, let's go to the verse five. Isn't that the same verse where it talked about the angels that left their first estate, their own habitation? Wasn't that Okaterion as well? Exactly. Yes, Renee. Yeah, there we go. I, that's the same word. I was. I, I didn't know the word's name, yep. but I know it's the, it's only mentioned twice in Scripture. Yep. Once when it talks about us having our glorified body, and another time when it talks about the angels leaving their yep. first estate. You nailed it. You nailed it. And and Sean uh, brought it up in the chat too. Um, I actually have the video up because I haven't finished it. But it's uh, the one yesterday was Christ in you, the one ultimate Mordecai. Oh and yeah. There's, oh, cool. there's there's a wealth of of good information in there and edifying stuff. And just realizing for for believers to to answer the the question the person in the chat asked. The reason why, it, yes, they're focused on sin, but also they're not recognizing who they are in Christ. And the purpose of the Holy, this is what Michael was referring to in the video. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is not to convict us. A lot of people get that twisted. They think the Holy Spirit's there to convict us of, of sin. And that's not true. What Michael is saying in the video, and what I agree with as well, is that the Holy Spirit is to confirm in your spirit that you are Christ's, that Christ is in you. He lived, we died. We die. We're crucified with Christ. So we're no longer, we don't have to, we're not a slave to that anymore. 
Christ lives in us. We're a slave to righteousness. Amen. And it, it, it's just so transforming if you can get that, if you can learn that. And they know that they're it's, not willing, though. They're not no, they're willing not. to just trust only in what Christ did. Just throw it all to the wind. Know it's only him. They can't get there to get saved to know that you have that desire once you're saved. Mm. Mm -hmm. They can't do it they because they won't just believe the gospel, dude. If yeah. they did, they'd know. They'd stop this license to sin nonsense. They would stop it. They would stop it because they, they would realize that it, it has nothing to do with it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when people, um, well, I want to get back to the, the, the Romans here, uh, but I, I, sure. I think that we, it's worth making this point that the people who are continually being so concerned, overly concerned about their struggle with sin or and pointing out others that they should be uh, sin conscious also, if they're sin conscious or if they're having doubts about their salvation, I would say these are both indications that do you really understand what the gospel is telling us? Right. I, I, I really question whether you even understand the gospel. And if you don't understand it, you certainly are not believing it because right. you don't even understand what, it, what it's telling us. It's saying that sin's not an issue. He paid for all our sins. So don't right. have to worry about that again. It's saying that that uh, the question of going to heaven has been settled. It's guaranteed. Don't worry about it. Done deal. Jesus promised it. Done and, deal. Uh, yeah, you if know, you understand that, how are you going to worry and have doubts and and be obsessed with you know uh, sin? And how dare you be obsessed with other people's sins? <laughs> and this next verse coming up, you guys. This, if people would live by this, there'd be so much less fighting and confusion in the church. I'm ready okay. for it. Verse five says, "One man esteemeth one day above another; another esteemeth every day alike." Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Mm. Sister, you hear that Seventh Day Adventist? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because there's always these people condemning others for celebrating Christmas because it's oh. actually just on the solstice and oh. that came from paganism and that did. If you're esteeming the day because you want to honor the birth of Christ, but you don't know his exact birthday, look, God knows our hearts. This is. They're, they're always bringing up, do not do as the pagans do and say you're doing it for me. But that, that's a whole, that you can't even bring that into this. No. And Paul says, let no man judge you on a holy day or as a Sabbath, because these things were just a shadow of, of what we have in Christ. And yeah. some people, they won't even let you, like the Jehovah's Witness, you can't even celebrate somebody's birthday. So it's just like, if you want to. If you want to celebrate or go to church on the Lord's Day, the day you rose on the first day of the week on a Sunday, fine. If you want to honor the uh, weekly Sabbath, the Saturday Sabbath, the Friday night till Saturday night Sabbath of the Israel, that's fine too. But I, I believe that if you don't understand that that was just a shadow of the rest we have in Christ, mm. you know, because it says God ceased from his works, we cease from our works as God did from his. And that's what the seventh day Sabbath represents. So if people would just respect people's decisions yeah. to honor a day or not honor a day and whichever you do, do it to God. Right. Let every person be persuaded within themselves. It's not right to force others to, to do that or to say uh, Sunday worships the mark of the, that's ridiculous. The mark yeah. of the, yeah. come on. You can still say, buy or sell if you go to church on Sunday. Let, let me say something here to the chat room for a second to uh, Celine. Celine, uh, you, you asked, can you give me a shout out? Uh, okay, I'll give you a shout out, but you're not going to like it, Celine. Do uh, you really think it's fair that I, you should be singled out when we have all the people in the chat room? And I, But I'm going to single you out for a, a shout out. Okay, you get your shout out. Uh, she's making some good videos. Go to her channel and check it out. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll, you'll like it and be blessed. Good job, Celine. But I, Celine, I hope that you can not be so concerned about, uh, about getting a shout out and think about is it really a good idea to single one person out in the fellowship uh, apart from the others? And think about that. 
Uh, all right, let's go to the uh, verse. Uh, uh, oh, Renee talked about verse five, but Brother Cripps, verse five, please. Yeah, uh, verse five. Okay, so Renee, Renee, everything Renee said is is, is a perfect way to, to to start this out. The thing I've I have debated, I've tried to debate against these people that attack Christmas and Easter, and it's a pay. Look, I understand. I, I've looked at the history of all of this. I understand that initially they were pagan holidays and and the, the church wanted to, to, to kind of supersede that. And so they picked days that were special to, to the pagans and they decided to make those dates uh, something else. And so we have your Easter and we have the, have Christmas. Those those days, I liked what Renee said, God knows your heart. You, you can celebrate the 25th of December, even though you know, historically speaking, that Jesus was not born at Christmas. He wasn't born at Christmas. But that's the day we as believers in general celebrate uh, Emmanuel God with us, him coming into the world to, to save us all from sin. That's the, that's the celebration. It's Jay, great. Did you know who else was against Christmas and, tried, and made it illegal in America for the first hundred years? The Calvinistic, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, the, Puritans. Pilgrims, yeah. the Puritans yeah. that didn't even know if they were saved on their deathbed. That's right, that's right, yeah. So, the legalistic people, legalistic yeah. quote right. unquote Christians, mm -hmm. uh, are, are all about that. They're all about restrictions and they're all about rules and regulations and things. They do not live in liberty or freedom, and those people are still around. My faith is all about freedom and liberty and joy and peace. Amen. Amen. So That's any I want everybody to have anyone that looks at verse five and can still tell someone else that they're going to hell if they celebrate pagan Easter and if they let their kids do a, a Easter egg hunt and have candy on this pagan holiday, they're going to hell. They're all going to burn in hell. Oh. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it, it makes me angry, honestly. And um, I, 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 now I don't even debate anymore. I'm just at the point where I can't put up with it anymore. Well, and gonna, it's like we never heard this before. Of course we know that. Yeah. We know where these things came from. And it was Rome trying to incorporate and get everybody into the same faith. So they compromised by, uh, you know, uh, putting pagan things in. Yep. Yep. We know they that. Sure did. Yeah. The, uh, um, I, I, I've heard this many times. One, one particular uh, time comes to mind where there's a guy that's no longer in the fellowship, and uh, he, um, he, he seemed like we, we agreed on the most important things, but, but he would bring this up. He didn't let his children celebrate their birthday, and, and he didn't, uh, and he wouldn't celebrate any holidays. And uh, and and he was he'd bring this subject up and, and get. Is you can tell his blood pressure is going up, and he's all excited over it. And I, I say to him, "Look, you, uh, there are many things in the Bible that uh, are are uh, kind of that's ambiguous. We don't really know. We can discuss it, try to figure it out. But then there are some things that there's actually it's explicit. I, I mean, how can you say that when you have this verse here? One man esteemeth one day above another; another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind." And, and, and the, the next verse, too, it's going to go, it's going to go on. It, it, but these verses are clearly talking about that exact question. So how can you not understand this, that we're all free? And I say, if you want to say uh, you don't want to celebrate any of these holidays because they're pagan, that's fine. For me, I happen to elevate every single day. Uh, when I wake up, the first thing I'm doing is praying before I even get out of bed. Lord. Thank you for this day. Another day, Lord. Bless Another this day. day. Help me today. And so as soon as I wake up, I'm praying and thanking the Lord for the day. Yeah. Every day I'm celebrating the gift of life and also the uh, uh, celebrating Jesus. Yeah. And, and uh, so I don't need um, uh, one or two or three days a year to, to say this is a day to think about Jesus. Every, every day should is, is that way. For me, I hope it's that way for you. And celebrating birthdays, what does that have to do with your faith anyway? You're just honoring the day someone was born and saying, yay, we're happy they're alive. What, well, what is wrong with that? Because it's, yeah. 
it's a pagan practice, Renee. How is that pagan? Job, like Rich was bringing up, that he cursed the day he was born, the, the day, his birthday. Yeah. Silly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you know that um, the Jehovah's Witnesses for, forbid you to celebrate any holidays. Right. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. So that's, uh, but I, I think their rationale would be um, that uh, you're you're elevating yourself somehow to think about your birth instead of just thinking about God. You know, that I, I, we'd have to ask brother uh, uh, Michael, he could probably. So we're not to allowed that. any joy or fun or right. festivity yeah. in this life because Jesus didn't right. come to give us life more abundantly, Ooh. but to tackle us you know, down you know, in bondage. Last week, uh, sister, uh, last week, I, I don't think you were here when it happened, but I, I had to actually rebuke brother Cripps about this birthday issue. <laughs> he, he was telling me that it was his birthday i said come on brother you, you know you don't you really think today is your birthday you were not born today today is a 50th anniversary of your birthday <laughs> that's, right. that's right i thought he was hatched yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, uh, I did see a picture. I the saw lizard, a picture that's of right. The lizard king. Sister, I saw a picture of him once, and there were no feathers on him, so I doubt he was hatched. <laughs> yeah, I don't okay. have any feathers, that's for sure. Okay, but did you know God has feathers? Yeah, he, he protects yeah, he, under uh, his wings. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, let me read verse 5 in the end. Amplify and see what it, how it says. It, one person regards one day as better or more important than another, while another regards every day the same as any other. Let everyone be fully convinced, assured, or satisfied in his own mind. Uh, that reminds me uh, what something else I wanted to say about this verse here, uh, but I'll go back to the KJV for this point. And it says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Uh -huh. yeah. Fully persuaded, of course, is a term that has been um, flown with a, a, with a banner by our brethren uh, yeah. now over the last year. And as a really important uh, point of understanding, being fully persuaded. Yeah. And uh, this verse here is not being talking about being fully persuaded about your salvation. No. That, that is the point that is, is being made is that for, salvation is the, the, the believing means that you are convinced that you have salvation. Yeah. You're fully persuaded. And so uh, it, it, it elevates this idea of believing from something that is maybe, let's say, superficial to something that's absolute. That um, uh, when I say I believe, that means that what do you believe? Well, I mean, I, I, I believe uh, in Jesus. Well, what, what is that? What do you mean you believe in Jesus? Well, uh, I believe he died on the cross for my sins. He rose from the dead. Well, what, 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 what does that mean? What do you mean by that? What's that mean to you? Well, uh, uh, I said, well, are you going to go to heaven? Are you certain? Why? Why would, should God let you into heaven? And they said, well, I, I go to church. I said, they, they're missing the point. They're, right. They're, they're believing the facts. They got their facts straight. But their, their belief uh, is, um, is still in themselves for salvation. Right. They're still right. believing that they are the key to salvation instead of believing the promise. Yeah, they're believing. People need to believe on Jesus. They need to believe on yeah. him. Yes. Well, uh, you know, that's another distinction. Uh, I'm going to turn my fan on. Tell me, if uh, Brother Cripps, if this is annoying or not. Because I'm sweating like a pig right now. But... Um, um, believing on Jesus and believing in Jesus, I think, is making the same point. Uh, uh, but when I say believe on, my sister Renee, I, I think I've heard you say it the same way. Believing on Jesus means the same thing as depending on him, relying right. on him. A total dependence on Jesus for your salvation. Right. That's right. Believing in Jesus. Some people think that when you're believing in Jesus means that you just believe in that he's the actual person that really existed. Um, but... Believing in him for salvation means that you're believing in his ability to right. give you eternal life and right. you're believing in his faithfulness to do it. Now, right. Let me give you a picture of this. By the way, how is the, is the fan bothering you? Can you hear it, Chris? Nope. nope. Sounds okay. good. Okay. So if I say uh, I believe in Jesus for my salvation, 
It's the same as me saying, Brother Cripps, uh, I, I have to go to California and I don't have any means of getting there. And if I don't get to California, I'm going to die. And I, I, need, I need help getting there immediately. And you say, Brother Luke, don't even worry about it. I promise you, I'm on my way to come and get you and I'll get and take you to California. Yep. And, and if I do, I believe in your ability to do it. Do I believe in your promise that you're going to do it? That's what I'm saying. Believing in Jesus for salvation is, is, is believing that he is able to give you eternal life. He's the source of eternal life. And mm -hmm. he's faithful to keep the promise. If, if Jesus promised it to us, then it's settled. There's no, there's no room for any doubt after that. If you believe he, he promised it to you, then, then it's as good as done. Mm. All right. So that's what being persuaded means, I think. Amen. I love it. Um, all right. Verse 6 in the KJV. Uh, he that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. There you go. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord. For he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not and giveth God thanks. That's it. Uh, Brother Cribs, I mean, I could sort it out. I mean, I could try to do a, you know, what is that in grammar where you uh, you you uh, take a sentence and you break it down, subjects and verbs, and you, you what is that called when you break it down like that? Conjugate. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, some things you're doing with a sentence where you're uh, analyzing it uh, grammatically. Yeah. I, mean, I could I could try to figure it all out, but when, when I see a sentence like this, particularly one of Paul's run-on sentences where it's very long, uh, it, 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 I just don't, it's not as obvious to me. And okay. now maybe, maybe you can enlighten us and make it real clear, or I could just read the Amplified. But let me get your thoughts before I go to the Amplified, brother. Yeah, absolutely. So all Paul's doing in my mind here is he, he's, again, I love how he doubles down on things. He, he starts it out, you know, in kind of simple, a simple structure. Then he comes to a sentence like this. He's saying, look, guys. If if one man regards one day, he's regarding it to God, like God knows his heart. And this is all paraphrase on my part, guys. OK, so he's saying if one guy regards a certain day, he's doing it in front of God. If one guy decides to not regard a day, he's doing that for God as well. If he decides to eat something, he's doing it for God. If he decides not to eat something, he's doing it for God as well. They're giving thanks. Each one of these people, whether they whether they celebrate a day or don't celebrate a day or whether they eat certain meals or whether they don't eat certain meals, they're giving God thanks for whatever it is that they're deciding. They're being fully persuaded in their own minds, whether it's okay to celebrate Christmas or whether it's not okay to celebrate Christmas, whether it's okay to go to Sunday and it's not the mark of the beast and you can go to church on Sunday or whether you don't yep. go to church on Sunday yep. or Saturday or Friday or, or Wednesday night. Tonight's Wednesday. We're having church. Is that okay with everyone? <laughs> and you know what else, Brother Luke and Jason? Basically, this verse is saying you are God's, period. Yeah. yeah. Whether you do this or that, you belong to God. You're his. But regardless of what you do or don't do, you belong to God. You've been bought. You're his. He paid a precious price. That's right. Yes. Okay. Let me look at it in the Amplified. And let me see verse six. Um, he who observes the day, observe it, observes it for the Lord. He who eats, eats for the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. While he who abstains, abstains for the Lord and gives thanks to God. Yeah. Now I make now it makes perfect sense to me now. Yep. It Very made good. sense to you before, brother. Luke. Yeah, I could have the I could have the amplified translation amplify it, or I could have <laughs> Sister Renee or Brother Cripps amplify it for me. Thank God, I'm I'm so thankful to the Holy Spirit because he he brings us the understanding when when we need it, and he does that at any moment. Sometimes we don't have to wherever we go during the day. We're supposed to know what we believe, why we believe it, and be prepared to tell someone about it. 
That's so, right. and, and we don't have to think ahead of time what we're going to say because the Holy Spirit will That's be right. there for you. And he is every time. You don't have to worry about what you're going to say. Just allow yourself to be in that situation. Do the studying. Do the relationship with him on your own. And when you get into a, a, a scenario where someone starts asking you questions about your faith, it comes right out of your mouth as if it were nothing. I promise it does. It does. It does. All right. <clears throat> Uh, verse 7 in the KJV says, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. Can you do eight with that one too? Yeah. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Yeah, thanks for telling me to put that together, sir. Go ahead, Renee. Yeah. This is the point you yeah. you already made. Go yeah. ahead. It, it doesn't, regardless of what you're doing, regard whether you live or die, you celebrate or don't celebrate, eat or don't eat, it is all unto the Lord because you are the Lord. Yeah. And I, I love this. I, I love places where there's a sense of permanence. Yeah. And I don't know how people think they're unpurchased or unborn. You're born into the family of God. You're purchased, bought with a price. If Christ has already paid the Father in his own blood for you, how can that be undone? I, you are the Lord's. Mm -hmm. And you doing something or not doing something does not make you not God's. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brother Chris. You are the Lord's. You are the Lord's. You are the Lord's. You are the Lord's. You are his. He paid for you. Yeah. It is finished. All you have to do is rest in his finished work. It's not in you to do anything. You don't have to do anything. He's already done it. Yep. So when it comes to foods or when it comes to holidays or when it comes to not celebrating holidays, whatever the case may be, in this verse, these two verses, he's just bringing, again, pounding home, trying to pound home the point of whose we are. We are Christ. He has purchased us. If Christ says it's fine to eat pork, guess what? I'm going to eat pork. Or if, if, if in your own relationship with him, for whatever reason, you feel the Holy Spirit telling you, hey, I don't want you to eat pork. I'll give you a quick example. I'm, I've been uh, working on my health, my overall health, and how I got fat in the first place was by eating a bunch of crappy fast food. And now I feel a conviction, if I want to be more healthy, I'm going to, for a season of time, I'm going to not eat fast food for a while. And, I, and, and I've lost like 90 pounds, and I still have a little ways to go, but I'm in a completely different place than I was before because I've made some different decisions. But um, th this is what I've decided to do, and I, I've, I, I'm okay with it. The Holy Spirit is okay. He, 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 in fact, he encourages me to continue and on the good path that I'm on, and, and there are benefits in that. But I'm not going to go to someone else who's struggling and they're eating fast food and say to them, dude, you keep doing that, you're going to hell. I mean, it may be bad for their health. It's not good for you to do that. I know that, but they're not unsaved. <laughs> if they're saved, they're saved, whether they eat or not. And and smoking falls in the same category. Drinking falls in the same category. All these these things on the outside that people say you're going to hell if you practice these things. Oh, gosh. I can't tell you the condemnation that's come on me over oh, no. being, vaping or smoking. I mean, I've got entire people obsessed for years over the fact that I claim to be saved, yet I vape. Yeah, yeah, and the reason, and you know very well the reason why is because they cannot get their mind off their own sin or your sin. Right. What they what they think is sin. Let me. Well, they let think me they quit smoking as part of their salvation, and they're resentful that I think I'm saved and didn't. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Jason. Yeah. I was overhearing, and I thought you said somebody lost weight. Was that you? Yes, sir. Congratulations, Jason. Well, thank you so much, Jim. I appreciate that, buddy. It's very thoughtful. He's so sweet. Yes, that is sweet. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was very nice, James. Hey, uh, uh, Mr. Rich 
B O B. Uh, my email, since you're asking, is sincitypreacher at gmail.com. That's uh, for Rich Bob and uh, anybody else who needs to email me. But if you have any questions that you want us to answer on the Sunday program uh, or prayer requests, uh, or if you want to put your name on the list to come to Las Vegas for, uh, uh, we're going to do an annual get together. Uh, for the church of eternally secure starting sometime this year and uh if you if you want to put your name on a list say i i definitely want to come if possible let me know i'll add you to the list uh if you have a a miracle that in your life that you want to share on our program we're going to have a, a program talking about our miracles uh so yeah email me with any of those those things oh if you have a a, a great um line a one-liner like uh, license to rest or uh, uh, you don't clean a fish before you catch it you know uh, things like uh, no issues uh, no tissues yeah. oh, <laughs> I, i'm collecting uh, uh, oh, oh, i probably got about 20 of really good one-liners that are that are profound i want to promote get everybody using these terms uh, yeah uh, you can send that to my email sincitypreacher at gmail.com let me read verse these two verses in the Amplified now. Uh, it's uh, is that verse six and seven we just did? Yeah, uh, seven and eight. Uh, seven and eight. Seven and eight. Seven and eight. Seven and eight. Okay. Um, none of us lives for himself, that is, for his own benefit, but for the Lord. Mm. And none of us dies for himself, but for the Lord. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Okay, look at this picture, look at this picture right here. Okay, can you? Uh, yep. yep. Let me see. Okay, now that is the icon. Uh, I have a couple of different icons I, I use, but I love that. This, this channel I have this and what does that picture mean to everybody we can see Jesus is the hand above that's nail pierced and the bottom hand is you or me or in, in every person the ability to embrace Jesus for our salvation by embracing him I'm uh, just that's just another way of saying I see he's pulling he's us up yeah, yeah. The picture of salvation he's holding his hand out to us and if all we have to do is extend our hand or open the door that's another way to say it he's knocking all we do is open the Hold door yep he's yeah. rescuing yeah. he's redeeming yeah. us yeah. redeeming us amen i i don't no, he, he is savior like he is savior i want to give you another picture and this one is the bible says that uh the father has you in the palm of his hand yeah and the Bible says Jesus has you in the palm yeah. of his hand. Well, here you are, and, and God has you like that. Mm -hmm. And another way I could say he has you, more related to this picture, is this hand that's reaching for you wants to take you to heaven. All that's required is that you believe, hey, that's the way to heaven, Jesus. I yeah. believe it. And what happens is Jesus grabs you in the palm of his hand, and you embrace him in faith, relying on him for the salvation. Yeah. And this is the situation. Yep. Now, the Bible says that he will never leave you or forsake you. So mm -hmm. here I am. If if I have any issues in my life where it's, you know, obsessing over fear, or fear about my sin or all these things, and or if I get involved in sin, and, you know, or, or even if I get angry at God and I don't even believe in God anymore, or let's say that whatever happens, I, I even if I let go. Thank you. Yep. He will never leave you or forsake me. He's got me. So the thing to understand, everybody, is that this um, eternal life, uh, Renee said that we cannot get unborn or un... What was the other thing? Un-something. Unpurchased. Unbought. Un yeah, we can't get... We're purchased. You can't be... You can't undo that. We, we can't get unborn. We have to go back into our mother's womb. We're back in time to undo this new birth that happened. Mm. Uh, so this salvation, this eternal life that we got from Jesus is irrevocable. It's yeah. irreversible yeah. by God or by us. Yeah. Yep. And saved implies an event it's, that is passed. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's if you lose it, like if you could be lost, then you're not yet saved because saved implies you've been rescued 
Yeah. And yeah. if you can fall back into danger, you have not been yet rescued. Mm. You have not been saved yet. Mm. So because saved means that you're saved. You yeah. you've been saved from what? The danger, the 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 death that you it you either have been saved or or you have not. There's no you're saved and then unsaved. That doesn't even make sense. Nobody would ever say that a lifeguard kept you from drowning, pulled you to shore, but yet now you're you're still a, a possibility of you drowning now that you're on dry shore. Well, to use that analogy, Renee, so you have two people that are both swimming and uh, and uh, the, the, that same lifeguard you're referring to comes out and he saves one of them. He's going back to the other one and unfortunately he drowns. So you have one that's saved and one that's unsaved. Both of those are permanent situations. Yep. He can't yep. pull the guy that drowned out and he can't revive him. He's unsaved. Right. Now, Fortunately for us, in the case that while that person still lives, if they're unsaved, they still have the opportunity right. to open the door. Um, I, and I just want to tie into what Brother Luke's saying. I love that that picture that he's showing of the clasping hands where one person, we, we can lift our hand away from Christ, but he promises, as, as Brother Luke said, to never leave us or forsake us. Yep. He has you. He's got you. Yep. Nothing you do can ever change that. Nothing anyone says about you can ever change that. He's got a hold of your hand. He will never, he won't let anything pluck and you out of his hand. He keeps you that way because he's good, not because you are. It has nothing to do with us. Right. He, and, he, and it's for his own namesake, not because you deserve it, not because you've uh, lived better now. And not, I mean, these people just can't seem to get that. No, they can't. And yeah. they have a tell. They have a tell. You can see them yeah. a mile away when they start with this stuff. Man, so, do they despise uh, the gospel. Going to verse 9 right now is a perfect uh, timing for that. Verse 9 says, For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Oh, yeah. So this is for all people. For So for the Calvinists who say that God chose people for destruction, this verse is, it kind of refutes that in my mind, both of the dead and the living. What does that refer to? That Jesus died for those who are saved and those who are unsaved both. He, right. saved, he died and was raised for all, yep. for all. Doesn't mean everyone's going to accept that. Some people, look, some people are gonna gonna see the gift of salvation and they're gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna rely on my own filthy righteousness rags. Yeah. It says, whosoever will come and drink of the water of life freely. Whosoever, whosoever will. What is what does whosoever mean, Renee? Who's whoever? Whoever. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, it's not when he died for the world, the words cosmos. It's for the world, not for certain special people. Yeah. He didn't pick some to be lost and some to be saved, but those that he knew would through the foreknowledge, Especially those them. he predestined to be conformed in the image of his son, and he uh, chose them for purposes. Yeah. For certain purposes. Knowing what he knew in his foreknowledge, he chose some for vessels of dishonor and some for vessels of honor. Amen. But that's not salvation. He doesn't choose some people to be lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, verse 10 says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Ooh. Ooh. Whose turn is it to go first? I forgot. Renee can go first if she wants Renee. to. Yeah. Uh, for, I mean, honestly, just saying God is the one that will stand before. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is no reason for you to judge, again, another man's servant. Yep. God is the master of that person. He will only answer to him. As he said, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. 
We'll answer to God and him only will we yeah. answer to. Now, oh, we, for some people who don't know the distinction between the, uh, the great white throne judgment. Oh, good point, Luke. And the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, we ought to clarify that. But, but first, let me, let me ask Renee, uh, uh, could you elaborate on this? It says we're going to all go before that judgment seat of Christ. It is a talk about believers. Yeah, we'll same that, people. But, yeah, because we're talking about brothers here. Yeah. Uh, Renee, are you worried or afraid at all of going to that judgment seat of Christ? No, because that determines reward or suffering loss of reward. It has nothing to do with salvation. Your only saved people are at the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. yeah. Brother Cripps, any, any any worries or fear of the judgment seat of Christ? Absolutely not, because here, here and this is just me. This is not anyone else. This is just me. But what I do is I keep my eyes on Christ. Whether Amen. Whether it's pre-trib or post-trib or, you know, rapture or not rapture, whatever the case may be, if my eyes are on Christ, I'm not going to be surprised by anything. If he comes and gets us tomorrow, great. If we have to go through tribulation first, great. If I'm keeping my eyes on him and keeping my eyes to the skies in preparation of his return or my death, there's no fear Amen. for me at all because I rest in his finished work. When I stand before the judgment seat and if, if God asks me, why should you get in heaven? My answer is going to be simply for no reason in and of myself, but only because I have believed in your son who came and died and rose again and is standing right there on your right hand. That's Amen. the only reason. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So uh, the Bible tells us that there, um, uh, it is appointed for man to die once and then the judgment. And so every person will die. Uh, now, there's been a couple of exceptions. I think uh, Enoch didn't die. And uh, it's, in, it's in dispute whether Moses died. I mean, not was Elijah died or not. But, um, but overall, we can say it's safe to say that we're all going to die. And we're all promised that someday God's going to judge us. So everyone who's ever died throughout history is going to be raised to life to go to this judgment. And there's two, I don't know if it's two different locations or if it's just uh, one location, but one is uh, God's, um, it's called the great white throne judgment because uh, they're uh, being judged uh, for their salvation and everybody's found. And black. that is after the thousand year reign, yeah. right? That is yeah. after That's the that, that's true. Right. Whether, whether you think the thousand year reign is what the way I see it or the way you see it, it's definitely right. after. <laughs> it's, it's, well, yeah, like uh, it, uh, that is for because it says that the the dead are not risen again for a thousand years because whatever, you know, if you take that literally or whatever, um, that the the saved, they're blessed in the first resurrection. Right. Mm -hmm. But they're not blessed in the second. Because it says those will be risen again to condemnation. So, but That's before right. before eternity starts, before God, the uh, Bible says that God's going to take the whole, the heavens, and roll it up like a scroll, and it's going yeah. to be burned up with called fervent heat, and then He's going to create new heavens and new earth. And before that happens, and we we live on this new earth for eternity, there's this judgment. Now, if you have never put your faith in Jesus and, and, and uh, received this eternal life that he offers everyone, you get judged at the great white throne judgment. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody going there is found that they're, um, they failed. They did not receive the gift. So they suffer the second death in the lake of fire and they perish. But right. for us, for all of us who put our faith in Jesus and, and we receive this gift of eternal life, we go to this judgment seat of Christ that it refers to here in verse 10, the judgment seat of Christ. Mm -hmm. There we're not being we're not being judged to see if we're Christ. We are Christ. That's why we're there. <laughs> and we right. will remain Christ for all of eternity. We're we're Christians and will we have eternal life? That's not the issue to be determined at the judgment seat of Christ. At the judgment seat of Christ. The question will be not, why should I let you into heaven? But it will be, 
after you received this gift of eternal life, what did you do for the cause, right. for right. the cause of Jesus Christ? And and uh, and if you did something that God values, Jesus says you've built up treasures in heaven. Paul says you're building up uh, uh, gold, silver, and precious gems. These, I don't know exactly what we're going to get, but uh, if you if you got saved and then from that day forward to your last breath that you made some kind of helpful contribution to the cause of Jesus Christ, then you're going to be rewarded for it. There is a reward system. There yep. is a merit system for Christians for uh, the, these rewards. But eternal life and salvation is not based on personal merit. It's not, right. based on a re it's not a reward. It's a gift. If his works abide after being tried by fire, God's an all-consuming fire, if his works abide, he shall receive a reward. If they're burned up, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. So Amen. as by fire. Amen. I don't know why people deny the doctrine of reward for the faithful and the martyrs and the soul winners and the missionaries. I don't know why they deny it, but there's a few that really hate it, that really hate the doctrine of reward for... Yeah. Those it's, it's it's true it's true we we find people every once in a while that are really uh against the concept of rewards they they want to believe somehow that uh it's unfair for some people to have more in heaven than others i guess and that it's going to be some kind of communistic equal division of everything in eternity but 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 that's not what jesus taught and it's not biblical if you see it yeah. anywhere in the old testament and the new testament yeah uh, Jesus told us, build, uh, build up your treasures in heaven. That's right. And I so, believe it's literal. Yeah. And so we, sh we should be saying, okay, I'll, if Jesus said to build up treasures in heaven, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And he also said that because of the, the, the good works that we do as believers, uh, that some of us are going to be have 10 cities and some five and some one. That's right. city. So God somehow is going to divvy up the responsibility of rulings somehow yep. uh, based upon how well we served uh, between our new birth and uh, the uh, the uh, resurrection. There are really people that despise it, though. You know, they say all things are ours. Absolutely. All things are ours. But it is a biblical concept that the faithful those that have, I mean, I, I have no problem with somebody that that died for the name of Jesus being rewarded for that. No. Why yeah. would anyone? I don't know. Well, this judgment seat of Christ here in this verse, some people might feel that that this is something to worry about and fear about going to the judgment seat of Christ. Good but point. that's why I asked you. To, we have nothing no. to fear. We're guaranteed eternal life. The only question is how many rewards are we going to get? And then, of course, there's the concept of casting our crowns at the feet of Jesus. I'm right. not sure how all that works out or not, but uh, all I am saying is that it's nothing to fear. Um, yeah. and, and I'm sure that even if people compare and say, well, gee, I didn't get very many rewards or no, I didn't get any rewards. Let's say they got saved on their deathbed, you know, and they never had never had an opportunity to do any works for the Lord. Uh they're just going to be thrilled that they got eternal life. Amen. You know? Listen, in regards to rewards, I've told God this in prayer. If I end up living in a van down by a river. Down by the river. That's it. I'm fine. Thank you, God, for saving me. Regardless <laughs> of what my rewards are, I'm not separated eternally from you. I'm not in torment. He is our reward. Is. You know, ultimately, yeah. it, Jesus is the greatest reward and Amen. nobody nobody denies that but uh, it's still you know like the 12 apostles <laughs> they have rulership over the 12 tribes of israel and that is a reward just for them yeah just for them correct mm -hmm. correct so and by the way that river even living down in a van down by the river the river of life guys right it's the and, river and of know, life when he said whosoever loses family and gives all this stuff up They'll be rewarded both here and in heaven for it. They'll receive like, what is it? A hundredfold in the hereafter. I was, uh, there's a, a, a kind of a, a, a famous street preacher that uh, was a good friend of mine for many years, Bible Jim, Jim Weber. 
and um, he's he's very prominent among the street preacher community. And uh, he was a very interesting guy. But he told would tell this story. He said that he was visiting this church, and and they they asked the congregation, "Okay, let's all pretend now." that we meet Jesus face to face for the first time. And as I see it, this judgment seat of Christ is where that's going to happen. I think, uh, yeah. uh, well, maybe not, maybe because we're going to, we're going to, before we get there with the resurrected body, we have the, uh, the interim, uh, what it we call the intermediate state of, of, of existence that, uh, but let's say we're in front of Jesus for the first time. How do you respond? What do you do? And they said, everybody do it right now. And some people got on their knees and they started bowing over. Some people started shouting and dancing and, and stuff. And and uh, Jim, Jim raised his hand and says, I've got a question. I've got a question. And the pastor says, no, don't, no, don't ask any questions. Just show us what you would do if you see Jesus for the first time. What we, he says, that's what I'm doing. I'd say, Jesus, I've got a question. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll have lots of questions. Yeah, so. yeah I thought that was funny. But uh, that is funny. Uh, now uh, it's uh, it's bedtime. Um, so do you want to stop now or go any further with any another verse or two? Well, or just... I wanted to ask uh, Faith alone there when we were talking about um, reward. I don't understand what he's saying. He said something about what Renee's talking about. It's carnal. Uh, Renee means it's carnal. Zionism. Blessed be the God and Father who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Absolutely. Spiritual blessings. But uh, Jesus also made it very clear uh, because we don't, I believe uh, heaven is a literal physical place as well as a spiritual kingdom. But I believe that a spiritual kingdom is a physical kingdom and that Jesus is sitting on a literal throne. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure what you mean by Renee is saying, making two kingdoms, casting our crowns, being casting our thorns, this life to the dust. Okay, well, we can uh, use things metaphorically in scripture, but I also believe in a literal translation. If Jesus said you gave up this and that and this and that, uh, at, that if you're faithful, you'll rule over much. I, I believe that there are literal kingdoms and we will be ruling uh, literal places. So um, I, I take it literally and that we live in the spiritual kingdom right now. We, we live in his kingdom right now, which is in the spirit. It is not observable. Uh, but I also believe in a literal kingdom and literal reward. I just don't know what that looks like. No one does. Yeah. <laughs> no one uh, does. Yeah. So uh, people are wondering, uh, 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 faith, faith alone, uh, KJV, uh, what do you mean by uh, uh, saying that Renee's viewpoint is carnal? I, I don't get that. Maybe you can elaborate. I know. It's oh, hard I know, think but... because I stand for the literal nation of Israel and that the land covenants will be fulfilled. Yeah, I do believe that. Yeah, I God's not done with Israel. Israel. That's but, clear. But how, if that's what he means, what? Why, how is that carnal? I don't understand. But the, the, the idea uh, that he's saying that uh, all blessings, let me see, how did he say it? Uh, what was the that? Gentiles are grafted into believing Israel. So, But as far as Israel as a nation, there are uh, land covenants that are being fulfilled through the nation of Israel. But Gentiles have been grafted into believing Israel. So I don't, I don't know what there's a problem with. I guess because I stand for the fact that in Romans 11, it says that God has not forsaken his people, uh, that um, I'm of Jesus' flesh and bones, a black man. Okay. Well, hey, uh, I can't find the original comment right now. I've scrolled through here and keep losing it. But the thing is, uh, the, uh, if you're talking about the, if you're making the point that uh, that verse uh, supports the idea that everybody's going to get equal Middle Eastern. Eastern. So everybody's going to have something equal in heaven. Then uh, you're ignoring the verses I pointed out, where Jesus tells us to build up our treasures in heaven, right. and Paul's point that, uh, uh, and Jesus' point that some will have more cities than others, and that, and the Paul's point that uh, we're going to have certain um, treasures, some will have more or less based upon how God values it. You you can't ignore all that, 
and and go to that verse and act like everybody has all the blessings. No, not everybody has all uh, the blessings of, that we could have had if we had all worked this. And God's fair; uh, He's going to He's going to pay us just like uh, um, uh, you know those who did more work gets. gets okay, more. that's fair. I, I want to address this real quick. If you do not mind, Luke, uh, the gentleman says he is of Jesus's literal flesh and bones. "Quote black man." Okay, uh, first of all. Uh, it, well, first of all, it doesn't really matter what color Jesus was, but he was a Near Eastern Jew, which yeah. means he was probably bronze-skinned, Middle Eastern looking. We know he was not black because he's from the lineage of David, and it was a big deal for Solomon to marry a black woman because mm -hmm. he wasn't black. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus was black, then it wouldn't be a big deal that Solomon married the Shulamite bride who says, I am black, but I am lovely. Um so uh, I, I don't think it's important. Paul says not to argue over genealogies and stuff like that, yeah. because those which are of the faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Uh, so I don't think anybody's any more precious to God because they're white or, or Jewish or black or anything, because that's of the flesh. Uh, and we are all one spirit uh, in Christ. Yeah. Um, so well, I let, let me say one thing, and then uh, well, I, I, again, uh, I, I can go as late as you want, but I know you guys have it's late back east. But let me just say this: uh, uh, Faith Alone, KJV, and anybody else uh, who I think needs to hear this is that uh, uh, there are people that are still here. It's 2019 in America, and still there are people that are somehow fixated on a um, race. Uh, but I, I'm, I want everybody to understand that there's only one race. It's the human race. And God is not valuing one ethnicity or uh, I don't know what other word to use, uh, one group of people over another. Um, and uh, if your person, if you if you want to bring that up as a, 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 a make say this is a, an important thing to understand, uh, I think you're you're way off base. And we go back to the first verse of the whole study tonight. And it makes that point. It says, him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Yeah. So in other words, you have the right, uh, faith alone, KJV. I don't know your your um, position on the gospel, so I'm not sure I can call your brother or not. But he says faith alone, so it's probably uh, believes in salvation by faith alone. But brother, if you... Uh, uh, Looking the verse. That's something, that's something that we should not be uh, having these disputations. If, if you want to make it as a point and say, this is what I think. And then we say, well, I think you're wrong. But if uh, we're not, there are some things that we're not supposed to argue back and forth according to that verse. It's okay to express different viewpoints, but to make it a point of contention and have disputations uh, over it is uh, taking it, your, your interest in that subject. Uh, don't take it that far, please. Um, yes, uh, the things that are not seen are eternal. Yeah, we agree with that. But I believe that the spirit realm where Jesus lives is also a physical place. Jesus is now flesh and bone. He has a glorified body. We have uh, fruits. So he does have a real physical body. What um, does dogging mean? Anyway, he says stop he, he wants you to read he, uh, the studies in Romans. He wants you to read Second uh, Corinthians. Yeah, I just looked at it. We will yeah. look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Right now, we can't see the spirit realm. But when we're like him, we will. Well, the spirit realm is a solid. People think that we're ghosts up there or something. We're not. Solid. We have Jesus flesh and bone. Yeah. He's flesh and bone now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but the, the point I'm making is that um, let's not violate the first verse, Romans 14, verse 1, the very first verse that we discussed tonight. Let's not violate that that premise. Yeah, that, we're all one. Yeah, let's we're all uh, one body. If you want to introduce an idea and say, well, Jesus was uh, from a black person. Uh, rather than some kind of Middle Eastern person, as we would would imagine, uh, that's fine. You can make the claim, 
but to to elevate that to uh, to the level of importance that you're it seems you're doing is uh, doing the, making it a doubtful disputation. And so, okay, we hear you. That's your opinion, but let's move on because that's not something that we should be uh, consuming our time arguing about. Great. We're all one body. We are all one body, baptized into Christ, one spirit in Christ. Also, when he gives us whatever glory we're going to put on, we may be different. We may be different colors. We may be purple or red or yellow or, or, or colors we haven't even seen or heard of yet. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> okay. Uh, shall we go to another verse or is that it for tonight? Sure. What, what's the next one we got Let's here? Let's do 11 and 12, Brother Luke. Okay, 11 and 12. Uh, so I'll read them together. It says, for it is written. As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Oof. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Yeah. Yeah. So I will say, I'll go first on this one. And, mm -hmm. But I think that they, um, we're going to all give an account, but there's these two judgments. Mm -hmm. One's going to give the account of why didn't you ever receive the gift? <laughs> I yeah. think God's going to like play a video of their life and show them yeah. all the opportunities they had to receive this gift of life. Laughing, and, and, and all the times they mocked it and, and refused it and, and would not receive it uh, yeah. and say, look, you've got nobody to blame but yourself. Uh, yeah. You don't have eternal life. And they die and they are cremated or perish in the lake of fire mm -hmm. uh, and then the other people who we have to give an account at the judgment seat of christ okay what did you do after you got born again yeah. and, and now you're uh, not only a child of god but you're a minister you're a servant did you serve god what did you do and we'll have to give an account on that and we'll be shown well some of the things you did really god didn't really value because maybe you're uh, it wasn't the right thing to do, or maybe your motives weren't pure. I don't know. Mm -hmm. and, and then and some of some people, uh, hopefully all of us, will have some things we did that God does value and will be rewarded. And and I don't think we'll have any jealousy or, or envy or the fact that the Apostle Paul got so much more than, than I did. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, uh, Cripps. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, a lot of people talk about this verse. I've heard it my whole life. And um, I look at it as being absolutely true, and so does Paul. Uh, he's saying uh, that, the, that the Lord says, as I live, as the Lord lives, which he, I mean, he's, he's eternal. He, he lives, we believe. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Remember that song? Um, because he lives, we live. Because, we, because he lives, we live. And every person will bow Wh whether they're saved or unsaved every person will realize that jesus christ is lord everyone will realize some to eternal uh, life and some to eternal separation that they have the opportunity now while the door is open but the door that god closes no one can open so if you're standing in this position or kneeling in this position as the case may be uh, then unfortunately it's too late at that point. But we all have an opportunity while we still breathe, while blood still pumps in our in our veins in this temporal uh, world, we have the opportunity to confess now, to get on our knees now before God and accept his free gift. Mm -hmm. And then when we do it there, um, it makes a difference of what judgment you're standing at. Either it's the white throne judgment and you did not do this uh, in your heart, while you were here, you didn't kneel before him. You didn't accept him. You didn't confess. Um, or you're standing at the other, the other, giving an account, which to me simply means you're saying to him, "You believe? I believe in what Jesus did. And that's all. I have nothing else to to do." I do agree with, uh, uh, I do agree with Brother Luke in that. Um, I, it won't be, we won't be shaking in our shoes. We've trusted him and we know that when we're standing before him in that particular judgment, we know we're going to be okay. We know, we know that we're saved. Yep. So we don't have to be afraid of that. It's, it, it's nothing to fear. 
Um, and and I I still am going to have, if, if he goes through each thing and says, you could have witnessed this guy, you could have done this or could have done that, I'm going to be like, yep, absolutely. I, yep. I, I feel horrible about the things that I didn't do for you. I do. Yep. Nobody's going to, you know, have any excuse in his presence. Like, yeah. And the alternative is the people that say, well, didn't I do this? Didn't I do that? Uh, I just thought of that at the same time. I was thinking just like you were saying. Yes, ma'am. So, but I don't I don't see any saved person ever doing that. Nope, they're not. They're just gonna say Jesus' blood, that's it. His resurrection, that's it. That's all that that's all they have to say. That's right. And, and I think the the whole foundation here is that on these particular issues, uh the freedom and the liberty we have in Christ regarding taste not, touch not, handle not. Uh regardless if someone is strong in the faith and knows the liberty they have, or if someone's weaker in the faith and feels that they still need to please God through taste, not touch, not handle, not either way, the only person that can judge a brother is Christ himself. Mm. We mm. should be putting ourselves in that place. No, you no know, judging their walk, judging uh, if they're right or wrong on these issues, because the, the, right here, it says that it, as every man purposes or persuades himself in his own mind. So it's it's got to be based on the persons, because uh, I don't want to go further ahead and say something that's going to be discussed next week, but it, it's based on our own conscience. And so the only one that can judge these things is God himself, and we shouldn't put our, ourselves in the place of judge on these issues. Nope, I agree completely. All right, let me just read it in the Amplified, uh, see how it phrases it, uh, 11 and 12. Um, for it is written in Scripture, and there's a quote. So uh, I don't know where this is from, what, where, where it's quoting, but the, somewhere in the Old Testament, Paul is quoting, it says, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then... Each of us will give an account of himself to God. Yeah, that's a, a good place to end. Uh, 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 something for everybody to think about. Uh, if you are listening and uh, have, have never understood and believed the good news that uh, eternal life is offered to everyone by Jesus Christ alone, only Jesus Christ has eternal life and he offers it to everyone and and you have eternal life if you believe that jesus has it for you and gives it to you that's all you gotta do is believe that jesus will give you eternal life and when you believe it then you receive it so for you like us we look forward to this judgment seat of christ so the question we should ask ourselves how are we going to do on that judgment seat of christ are we building up treasures in heaven or or not and uh, I, I keep repeating this, that uh, I've been disappointed that so many Christians I, I meet, uh, they don't even recognize the fact that they are a minister. They, they think of some kind of uh, laity clergy separation, that there are some people that are in the profession to, to be ministers, and, and uh, uh, the rest of us aren't, uh, but everybody is in the profession of being a minister that is a servant we're supposed to all serve god once we are a child of god and and then but we're going to be paid for it in the form of rewards so you're on the payroll you know you 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 punched in the clock is you're on the clock right now uh, are you going to build up treasures in heaven or are you going to be at the judgment seat of christ and have all these regrets because so much time was wasted that's the question um uh, I guess, and that's my kind of, oh, I guess that'll be my summary for the, the talk tonight. But uh, let's, uh, let me hear your uh, your summary, uh, Brother Cripps. I, it's, just, it, it's absolutely wonderful so far. And I think we stopped uh, at a great point too, Brother Luke, because uh, he's starting out with, you know, kind of the back and forth and trying to bring the point home about what the situation is with, with brothers uh, or or people um, accusing others for not doing the same things they do. And then so the verse starting next week then, um, it, he's kind of wrapping things up. Uh, but I love the way that it ends in making the statement. I love how it, 
um, tells us that we are the Lord's is the bottom line. We are his and, and that we stand or fall with God. We live or die with God. We eat pork or do not eat pork uh, yeah. as it pertains to God and make up your own mind and, and be okay with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all just a short summary. And um, I love you guys in the chat. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Renee? Yeah, so I, I, think, uh, I think that we should take heed to what this study was, and we can apply that to what's going on in the chat right now. Uh, we're not to judge one another on these issues right now. We all have opinions on certain things. Uh, if we're all on the same foundation, we are of one spirit. We are one body. We cannot be at enmity within the body. The body cannot be at enmity with itself. Uh, so I, I think it's important to, uh, it's okay to have our opinions, uh, but, uh, we should grant liberty and grace to others that disagree maybe on things that aren't foundational, uh, necessary issues, especially things like this, um, that pertain to the flesh, the, uh, what not to eat or to eat, what holidays to have or not have, you right. know things that people really get all twisted up about that don't need to be because yeah. it's God we answer to. And, and when I do get accused uh, for things, I, I say, I answer to God, I will answer to God, but I don't want to make somebody stumble. Like if my freedom offends someone else, I would rather them not stumble because of my freedom and, and just, and, and do what is right in their eyes so they don't get uh, offended by me. I think that's more important to make people feel comfortable and respected. And so if that means me setting aside the liberty I have because it offends them, then I'm, that's what I'm going to do. And I think we should really put others first in these issues. Yeah. Okay. Um, is the I've got my fan on. Is that bothering you? No. Nope. No. Okay. Nope. All right then. Um, well, I, I want to make my last remarks here to Faith Alone KJV. Um, um, I don't know if you were here in the beginning when we did verse one, but I know you were here a few minutes ago when I went back, back to verse one and explained that the, 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 the point that we're supposed to be learning from verse one, and not only verse one, but the whole subject tonight was uh, let's, uh, let's tolerate and uh, our opinions on these uh, uh, things that we, he calls doubtful disputations. And, and but what you're doing in the chat room, Faith Alone KJV, is, is you're violating that scripture there. So, you know, I'll give you an example. Uh, Renee and Cripps and Daniel and uh, everybody else, uh, Michael, have discussions all the time. We've all made an agreement that, yes, we uh, not only understand and believe in the core doctrines of Christ unity, uh, we think these things are essential. We are unified. Apart from that, like the point that you're bringing up and many, any other points of uh, dietary or uh, Israel and uh, the millennial kingdom, all these other things, um, we have the liberty to disagree, but we don't want to turn it into a disputation. And, and uh, Renee and I, we, we, the subject came up about Israel, uh, the, the millennium and the judgment of Christ. She said, well, that's, of course, that's after the thousand years. And I said, yes, but I just think the thousand years is different than she does. Do, now, you didn't see Renee and I going back and forth trying to prove the other one wrong. We're free to express a different viewpoint on anything. Yeah. Uh, but you're not free to try to cause dissension in, 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 in the congregation. Right. And Faith Alone KJV, that's what you're persisting. You're persisting in doing that. So let this be caution uh, for you. Um, I, I hope you'll continue participating, but I'm just telling you, the, the chat room is, is yeah. not the purpose of trying to argue and prove Renee wrong or me or anybody else. You say... Well, uh, if you want to express a contrary opinion, you can. But you, the way you're conducting yourself is trying to win an argument, and we're not here to be winning arguments against each other. Uh, uh, Brother Luke, I, I need to answer this because this is a salvation issue. 
uh, 1 John 3, 9 does not mean that one born of God won't deliberately knowing and habitually sin because he's God's seed. That's not what it means. Who's one born that? of God cannot sin, meaning uh, the, the one born of God is the spirit. And the spirit, the word there in the Greek is not practice sin. It is cannot even produce sin. The Amen. spirit, once he's born of God, he can't produce sin because the seed of Christ is sinless and he remains sinless and sin can't touch him. Okay. Uh, you're, you're misunderstanding the flesh versus spirit here. The, that verse is not saying if you're really saved, you won't deliberately sin. That That's not what it's saying at all. It's saying that the spirit won't 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 sin it cannot right, i gotta i gotta add one more thing to uh renee uh in it and uh, uh, what we're, when we're talking about israel and the, the uh who's israel and and uh the millennium and all that stuff these are minor issues when someone in the chat room wants to argue about this uh first john and argue that you, you cannot uh, habitually or deliberately sin then you should not have a YouTube channel mm. titled Faith Alone, KJV. And if you're going to come into this congregation and argue against the core doctrine that um, our uh, salvation is not does not hinge upon our behavior, then you don't belong here because you're not a Christian. And you're not, I'm not going to allow someone to be in the congregation arguing against the core doctrine of Christianity. So I'm going to uh, remove you and uh, if you want to have any dialogue, you better do it some other place. Uh, I don't, I I don't want you to... saying that it proves you're, if you're really saved, then you won't. Uh, I'm not, I don't think he's adding works per se. Not, not our, our, our behavior, does, is not, our salvation is not based on, we don't receive salvation because of our behavior. We do not maintain our salvation because of our behavior. And right. we certainly do not prove our salvation right. by our behavior. Some of the best behaved uh, people I know are very legalistic Mormons and Jehovah's You're Witnesses. Not saved, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, but, but I wanted yeah. to clarify yeah. that's not what the verse is saying. It's not saying a yeah. a person yeah. won't. Okay. But because how much so, is habitually, Luke? I mean, how much is deliberate and habitual? How much is that? I mean, who who defines what that is? It's it's saying that it cannot not even one time sin the the, the spirit cannot produce sin. Okay, it's not possible. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry. Uh, my my suspicion my suspicion about faith alone KJV since I said earlier I don't know what to think of you I don't know you I don't know what you believe about salvation judging by the title of your YouTube channel it it's a, it's I made a video years ago titled Faith Alone Really. Because ah. I encounter a lot of people that they, on the surface, it seemed like they believe salvation by grace alone, uh, by, uh, faith alone, and Christ alone. And yet, the more you analyze and dig, you right. find out they don't really believe that. And right. that's what I discovered with this faith alone KJV. So I've removed you, and you're no longer welcome. I don't allow anybody to come into this congregation and, and teach contra argue contrary to the core doctrines of Christianity. <laughs> Yeah. Guys, All I gotta right. hop off. I'm, I don't mean to uh, leave abruptly, but I've got a situation, so um, I need okay. to head out. But uh, right. I love you guys. I hope you have a can good night. For, can you stay for five okay. seconds more? Five seconds, yes. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Join us Sunday at uh, five p.m. Eastern time for the Sunday program. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior, God Jesus.